Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Um, today, we're doing like a little um, fold away set of hooks. Okay. Um, a bit, um, I didn't really want to call them coat hooks because I'm not sure they would stand up. You know, I think of my uh, coat work hooks at home and they got tons of coats on there. Um, so I've not labeled it as coat hooks. Um, this would probably collapse under my <laughs> all the coats that we got at home, especially during the winter. Um, but we are doing um, some fold away hooks. Uh, lovely little design. And again, I've tried to keep it quite, um, you know, so that you could put your own spin on it. So quite um, kind of open um, and you can design your own hook shapes and things like that. Um, I think we should just get straight into it. We've got it on the bench here. Um, there's there's a part of this um, that I want to show you about building the frame. Um, and it's really simple. Again, I've tried to keep it um, as minimal tools as possible. Um, and, and a lot of this, there's, there's plenty of different ways of joining. I'm doing a little bit of um, uh, doweling today. So let's come over to, to the bench here. Um, I should also mention we've got um, Steph on, on, the, um, on the cameras and questions. Um, you know, any questions you've got, please just pop them in the comments there. Uh, we'll do our best to answer those um, as, we, as we go through the demo. So this is what it is. Um, it's basically a, a frame, um, and that contains um, a set of hooks. Um, we've got a little Velociraptor here, because um, this, you know, you could have a hook for each person if they wanted to put their own stuff on there um or you could you know have it as a theme so you might have it all dinosaurs different types of dinosaurs um and also also we we've thrown in a penguin for um <laughs> for maria if she's watching um so any shaped hooks you want really um but we are starting off with this very kind of basic frame I'm going to tap this one apart. I've, I haven't glued this or anything yet. And you'll see it's a very simple um, kind of structure. I put my little Velociraptor out of the way. So what we've got here um, is I've used a doweler to create these holes here um, to receive the dowels on our kind of upright sections. OK, and we'll show you how we do that. Um, I'll just go through it um, step by step. I've done the bulk of the work. Um, so, but I will do a demonstration on this end one here um, where we've not got any of the dowels in. Now, to do this and make it repeatable and, and try and keep everything, um, you know, nice and straight and at 90 degrees, um, I've built this little jig. OK, and it's a really simple thing. All we did was to um, screw a couple of bits of ply onto another bit of ply. And I'm just going to grab my square here. So we're using this top face of our ply as a kind of like a register point. And all I've done is to put a square on that, draw a line down there. Always best to do it both sides, I find. Um, and then you've got two kind of points of reference. Um, but that needs to be perfectly square to this top face here. OK, and that's really important. Um, and I've done another one on the horizontal. And that will support the kind of the top and bottom rail. So if we offer both pieces up, you'll see that's the kind of um, corner that we're going to create. Um, and if we bring this piece up, we'll drill our holes in here and here with the dowel maker. And you'll see just where it's indicated on that top rail. So they'll be the same underneath. OK. Um, so that's my bit of wood. I'm bringing it up flush to our, um, our jig, the, the top line of our jig here, and make sure it's up against our nice square bit of ply there. That's going in the in the vise. And, you know, I've got a little bit of a gap in here, but that's fine. We're going to put a little bit of pressure um, forwards on this um, down jig. OK, here's the jig itself. It's adjustable for different thicknesses of timber. Um, so you've got a little um, thumbscrew on top here. 
that just releases this and this again this part at 90 degrees um, will slide back and forth okay it's got you won't see it on camera probably not very well um, but it's got all the little increments here on mi uh, millimeters and on the same on the other side and they've even put a little kind of tooth on on the zero okay so we've got a center line here which is in line with our um, dowel jig or, or where we're going to drill through with our um, with our drill now the first one that you do you'll have to establish that center line um, so really easy again we would just measure across that face here this one was about 24 mil um, so just marking it off at 12 okay so a little pencil we would just mark off that center line here and here and then we can align our doweling jig to that center line okay um, and once that's set because we have that thickness of the um the the ply to consider um we need to set that on our on our center line so our tooth on our zero mark on our doweling jig um perfectly aligns with that that center line and it will do it both ends okay now the reason I made this jig was to make it repeatable, um, nice and easy. I'm just going to grab a little bit of wood. Just going to walk off camera a sec, sorry. Just going to grab a little bit of wood um, just to show you that actually this piece of timber, it won't you know, seat properly on this jig. We've got these two kind of wings on it, and they need to be sat on the workpiece. With thinner material like this, you need um, something as a kind of a register point to to rest up against okay good so what i did was to mark off that center line to decide the spacing between the dowel and that you know as long as they're not too close together um, that could be any um, kind of distance just need to make sure we're not breaking out on the sides here and then using a lip and spur type drill bit with the little sharp spur on the top there. You get that centered on one of those marks that you've made for your, um, for your um, dowel to be uh, drilled into. And then what I did was just to mark that off on the jig. So I've got a pencil line here. Let's move that out and let's bring that so you can see it. I've done a, um, a pencil line, sorry, it's difficult to hold, a pencil line on this side of the jig here. Let me just move that across. Not really showing up on camera there, but there's a pencil line here. And when that jig is sat up against that pencil line, that corresponds with where I need to drill it underneath. So test it with the um, with the drill bit first, get that spur right on that spot where we've marked off. And you'll only have to do this once. Um, and then move it over to the other one and do the same thing. So we can mark our pencil line on our jig. And then the spacing will be the same on each and every one of these um, uprights. So let's get that back in there. All happy with that so far, Steph? No uh, questions on the on the drilling, on the jig? No real questions, but Fuller said if you clamped both pieces in an alignment jig, you could dispense with the dowel maker and drill straight through the top rail into the style, um, making sure it's a perfect fit. But I guess that wouldn't be yeah. a good joint then. So we're, we're kind of hiding the joint. You could absolutely just drill straight through the top here. Um, and, and put a screw in or a dowel straight through, um, but you would see those dowels on top. You know, that's not no, nothing bad about that. Um, we've just decided to keep it a kind of a hidden joint on here. Um, and there's loads of ways you could do this. You could um, get a block of wood um, and create almost like a, a drill guide um, where this would seat in the piece of wood with the, the drill holes in top. That would make it repeatable and, um, and nice and easy to... Um, to do all the pieces the same. Um, so there, there's variations on, on how you could do this. 
So let's get my goggles on. The down and jig is coming up to my pencil marks here that we marked off. So let's get that in the middle. And I'm putting a little bit of forwards pressure on this jig um, to make sure we close that gap between the, um, the ply and the, the bit of wood that we're, we're drilling. Um, is this the one? Yeah, this is the right one. So I've got a few bits of wood floating here. I just want to make sure we're on the right one. So forwards pressure with the jig. I've got a little collar um, to stop when I'm down to death. And then we'll move it over to our other pencil marks again with that forwards pressure. And there we go. We've got our two holes um, in the same place as the, um, the others. Let's flip it over. We can do the same on this side. Sorry, I am drilling the wrong one. Let me just get this off here. Give it a little wiggle. Those dowels, those fluted dowels are really good. I've kept all this um, not glued for the time being. So we need to do this one here. So again, let's get in our jig. Make sure we're aligned to that um, right angle. And then hold that in the vise. We're coming up to our pencil marks that we've made. And just drill straight the way down right to that stop collar on the drill bit. Just making sure there's no kind of crud under there that's going to throw it out. Forwards pressure. Oh, the drill's let go. We've got okay. Martin on here saying that he's just bought one of those jigs that you're using now. So it's nice to see it being demonstrated. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, it's a really nice, easy way of joining material together. Nice and quick and easy. And, um, like I say, can be repeatable. Sometimes, um, you know, if you're you're marking things out, you've got a lot of them to do. Um, it's sometimes, um, you know, it's worth spending that time to build the jig um, and make sure that everything's kind of uh, repeatable. Okay, so another question. So this one is related to carving, I believe. Yep. So Rustic Woody has asked, he's acquired... They've acquired a set of carver's chops that is a wooden vice. Would you recommend treating the timber? If so, what would you use? So uh, wooden jaws on the vice? Carver's chops. Carver's chops. No, I'm not familiar with that. Um, it could be... Um, usually you don't want to, um, you know, the, the both bits of wood uh, will probably bruise a little. Um, you know, through clamping. Um, have you got that up on, on there, Steph? I have, if you want to. Sorry. I have, have a quick peek where the carver chops are. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a, a wooden vice. Um, I, I, would, I would expect they'd come from the manufacturers as they're intended, um, that um, you could put um, potentially um, a little leather, almost like a leather jaw on there. Um, if you wanted to protect the vice itself, um, that's still going to grip and it's not going to, um, you know, bruise either the workpiece or your um, or your vice. Um, but that's a new one on me, the, the carver's chop. Um, worth a little look. I don't think we do it here. Um, quite often we get quite, um, you know, stuck into the products that we we sell. Um, so I've not I've not seen that one yet. That's a, it's a new one on me, but I'll I'll definitely have a look. Thanks for that. It reminds me slightly of the parrot vice. Yeah, it looks a bit like the parrot okay. vice and almost like a, the kind of jeweler's thing. It's really nice. It's got those upwards jaws um, that give you plenty of kind of access from underneath if you needed it. Um, but yeah, it looks like a quite a cool little thing. I'll I'll, I'll look into that. Okay, so we've got our our holes drilled there. Um, 
what we need to consider is the, the other side. Um, and what we did, if I grab my jig there, just like we had our upright, um, that same, those same spacings are going to work if we come across on the horizontal. So this strip here is parallel to that top face. That can be held in the vise. And just like we did before, we've used those positions, those same positions marked off on the jig to give us that equal spacing. And then hopefully the two will kind of marry up um, when we put them together. You sometimes will have to um, play with a bit of um, some of this doweling, you know, a little kind of twist here or there. Sometimes they're not perfectly aligned, um, but it really helps if you've got square-ended timber and, and all those sorts of things. All the little things will, will kind of help you as you go along. Um, okay, so hopefully... You can see how that frame goes together. The only other thing we've done is drill out for um, to receive these kind of arms, if you like, on the um, on the hooks themselves. And that was just a 12 mil drill bit. I've got um, the ply that we're using. I've used um, you know, the the price of ply has gone up crazy amount recently. Um, the the ply that we're using is about is just about 11 mil, I think, that one. Um, and then we've drilled a 12 mil hole. And again, this could be any size you want. You could repeat this again and again if you wanted like a whole bank of hooks. Um, so I haven't given precise measurements for anything um, because you might want to change this yourself. All I would say is um, don't put it up flush against this um, side wherever we decide to drill our 12 mil holes. Because when we want to kind of open that hook, we don't want that back face to foul on our frame. Okay. What I did was come in 10 mil and then drilled, um, you know, that side of the 10 mil on all of these um, the apertures or holes. Okay. Let me just go a bit further with that one. I think what I've done here is um, where we had to set the depth for this one on the, with the drill collar. Um, it only goes a certain amount because we don't want to break through. And I think I've left my drill collar up at that depth. So I'm just going to take them a little bit further. I'm going to use the holes that we've already drilled as a kind of a drill guide and just take that a little bit further. They're not quite deep enough for the... Um, For those dowels that looks good okay um now the hooks themselves let's pop that to one side in a minute we'll do a little bit of assembly um but the hooks themselves um what i did to start off with you know excuse my kind of crude drawings um but we did um offered my my work piece up and just drew a rough size of that kind of window um, in the um, in the hooks. So these lines on the side here are representing that kind of the the bigger pieces in that frame. Um, and then you can design whatever you like in that space. Okay, you can see here we've got the penguin and then a more kind of traditional hook. Um, but you can do it however you like. Um, some of them, we did a little dinosaur, a little um, kind of velociraptor, and that gives you space to hang the keys in underneath. But they don't have to, you know, you don't have to strictly put a, um, a line down the middle. These hooks can be various sizes. Let me just grab my pencil. So we were looking at the kind of penguins earlier. We need to make sure we've got this arm coming in. Um, so that is this part on the, on the um, project. So this kind of spine, if you will. Um, so that can come in like this. We don't have to go um, halfway. So what we could do is draw 
something like a, a little penguin just going to really quickly freehand a little kind of penguin shape whoops gone through my dog hole let's come down here and that could go like this we could have its kind of belly there sometimes got a marking around the neck um, but the other hook could be something like this so like a, a little baby penguin kind of snuggling up looks more like a puffin this one but you get the idea they don't have to be um you know it doesn't have to have a, a hard line down the middle you could mix this up this could be plants coming in whatever you're kind of into um you know like i say make it your own um so that's a little bit on the design um if you wanted to keep them all the same you can do your uh, division line down the middle do your hook in however whatever shape you want it and then you can almost sort of fold the paper over and get that um you know the um get them looking exactly the same symmetry is the word i was i was looking for so what have we got here let's have our project piece we want one of these designs let's do another penguin i like the penguin i'll grab my scissors here and we don't need that other information we can just trim that off trimming off the excess because um you know it'll only take more glue to stick it down or you could use your carbon paper if you wanted to you know save the glue and this bit of ply is um is a um bit that we've taken off a, a display actually because um we didn't have any ply in um so i've nicked a bit off one of jason's display lovely displays that he makes for chucks and things i pinched a few of the uh the shelves off of that with his permission, of course. I was going to say, as he noticed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so he offered. I didn't just just uh, pinch them off him. Good. So a little, well, I've put quite a lot on here, but a bit of that kind of copy deck, so that's going to hold it down to our um, little uh, shelf. And I'm trying to use that straight line that's already on there. So I'm aligning the, um, the project along here. And we can just smooth these bits out. Good. So over to the, um, the scroll saw now, Steph. Thank you. So just like normal, um, we are using the modified geometry number five, and that's just going to breeze through this ply. We're hooked up to the extractor. Let me just make sure that that's on. We're good. And now we're just going to cut around our project. Nice and square across the top here. Swing that around. This is all waste. So if you wanted to make any cuts, do any of the little um, kind of reversing or things like that. We've got that opportunity with this one. So nice constant feed rate. and just following this shape um, that we marked out. Like I say, these could be anything. These could be palm trees, dinosaurs, whatever you're into. This, big, uh, this penguin has a bit of a blunt beak. I didn't want to go with the sharp beak. 
because um, we don't want it poking through our clothes or whatever it is that we're hanging on here. And also, if it goes too thin on the end, it just becomes a little bit brittle. Using applied, so we've got that kind of cross laminated strength um, for the hooks. But you could always do this um, in your timber. Um, but if you are doing this in just a natural timber, make sure the grain direction is um, is following the workpiece. So the grain direction will be going this way in line with that spine. Okay, good. That's that. That's our little penguin. Really quick and easy to um, to cut out. All right. Um, and all we've done with the other one was to um, to use a little bit of pyro to kind of keep the the black and the white separate um so i've used a little bit of pyrography um and then uh, spirit stain okay now we don't need that anymore we can um we can always um burn that shape in any you know any which way we want I am just going to quickly trim off the end of this. I've left it a little bit long. Okay. So there's our little birdie. Let's just pop on to um, camera one a minute, Steph, while I've refreshed this one. Thank you. And then we should be good to go. Okay, so obviously we've got a round hole and a square peg there. Um, it's not going to fit straight in. I always give myself a little block like this, a little practice one. So if you are, do want to test the, um, you know, the fit, we're not bruising our, um, our original um, top rail. And for this, I'm just using a little flex cut carving knife just to round things over. Um, but again, there's loads of ways you could do this. You could use um, a dowel maker. You could use um, a plug cutter. All of those sorts of things uh, to make it a perfect round. But I quite like the kind of crafty um, way of doing things. And again, it's more, more tools and more um, expense to do that way. So we're keeping it, keeping it crafty, keeping it simple. Let's just get rid of this paper. We've asked it, what, what kind of thing people would have for their coat. Oh, well, hook racks. Yeah. And um, a couple of elephants. Elephants are yeah. a good popular one. And Frederick's come up with a police officer directing traffic. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I like that. You could, do, um, uh, you could do a tractor with a big, big dumper hook at the front. To, yeah, to hold it'd be out. really cool. And also you could, um, you know, allow these things to go past the frame. So say we had, I'll, I'll get this off and we'll, we'll have a look. You could incorporate extra bits into the frame. So you could have, let's have a look. So say we had our Velociraptor over this side. You know, this piece here could have the rest of the body, have the tail coming out, if you will. Let me just bring that across so you see what I'm talking about. So this part of the frame here, if you had your Velociraptor or, or whatever it is, you could have the tail coming out of this section, um, you know, a little bit more thought and a little bit more um, to do in the prep. Um, but certainly it's going to look really cool. Um, loads of stuff you could do with this. We were just giving you the kind of the ideas for now. Um, an elephant was on the list, actually, <clears throat> and also a rhino. When I looked at the original hook, because I found something like this in my attic, um, me and Steph at home, we've had a clear out in the attic, and I found this little kind of fold-away hook thing, and I thought, 
why not let's do that as a as a live so what we're doing here we're, we're rounding off um our square of our um of the kind of spine of this hook if you will using that kind of grip technique where um, both thumbs one on top of the other the um, the thumb that's holding the knife is on the back of the knife and then just pivoting against one another um, to take those edges off and I'm going to knock off the corners first doesn't take long with a knife like this um, although this is quite an abrasive material this will soon blunt your carving knives but a little hone up afterwards we'll put them straight so just knocking off those corners sometimes a little bit awkward to hold you could put this in the vise or you could just sand this in use a bit of abrasive and um, get that nice round So sometimes I'll use this thumb to kind of push through the cut. Sometimes you can just use that kind of pivot action to take that material away. I quite like this Pelican knife because it's got that long kind of swoop on it. Frederick's come up with another idea of teapot, maybe. Might be a good one for the tea towels in the kitchen. Yeah, really cool. Exactly. So you make this, um, you know, um, suit the area it's going to go or suit the person it's going to, you know, going to hook their keys on it. Um, yeah. I think this is kind of a tea towel holder type thing, isn't it? So we've rounded that end off. I'm really just knocking off the corners and then using a bit of abrasive, just kind of smooth that in. Quite a rough abrasive. Just taking off the worst of those kind of knife marks. And then we can test it in our little test block. And that's fine, that's gonna spin around. Um, if you would prefer, you can soften all of this in. If you want to take that hard edge off, um, we're not going to bother with that today because um, of the, the kind of time constraints we've got um, around these lives. But you'd do the same on the other side there. Just knock off those corners. So we're almost producing like a kind of hexagon. And, and as long as it fits in our kind of um, little guide hole, test it you know maybe there's not quite in there take off a little bit more give it a sand make sure it's rotating properly um in that in that tested um test piece okay let's see if this will go back together now that we've drilled our holes for um this end bit so it's not too bad it's a little bit off there so it's probably that we've need to turn that around that's it when you flip these over turn things around they will want to sit in in, in a certain um, uh, position um, fluted dowels going in okay and I would put a bit of glue on those as well we're keeping this one loose so we can kind of take it apart and make any um, adjustments if we need to um, and then we just need to align all these little holes Get everything lined up. That one going in there. And it could be from this test, we got it back to front. But, you know, we just take it back off. And um, put it back together. So this is a nylon-faced hammer. Um, it's not going to do any um, damage to our piece of timber. Um, if not, if any doubt, put a bit of timber as a kind of interface to knock things together. And that's it, really, for the um, for the build. Um, you know, 
some of these you could um sorry if we can go back onto camera two there steph some of these we could um you know make into a double hook so you could put your keys underneath and your um i don't know your torch or whatever on top um or your hat um but yeah have an experiment have a play around with different shapes for the hooks um you could color these add and decorate them how you like add a bit of pyrography um you know if you had say you had four people in your household you could burn their names on the special hooks um but yeah a fairly simple um construction i think i'm going to go all dinosaurs for the next one and um and kind of give it put it in my boy's room because he's um he's keen on all that um again a coat of oil uh, once you've done all your decorating and things like that I think that's about it, really. A bit of a shorter one today. Um, perhaps I could have done more of that drilling and, and gone through the through the Dow jig. Um, but it's really there just to give you a little idea, um, you know, a fun little project and, and really kind of simple as well. We good for questions, Steph? We're good, I think. We're all yeah. good. Good stuff. Well, thanks again for um, for joining us on the, on the Woodworking Wisdom. Like I say, make this one your own. Um, do them the shapes that you like, um, that you're going to enjoy. And, and, and um, Or if it's a gift, you know, you can really personalize these things. Um, thanks again for joining us on a, on a Woodworking Wisdom. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you, um, if, if you wanted to, um, to do that for us. It's really great. It really helps us. And we'll see you again next week for some more Woodworking Wisdom. <laughs>